had the best of your health and welcome to yet another session of English. And in today's class, as you see on the black book, I'm sorry, the white board, we will be discussing the continuation of active and passive voice. If you remember, in yesterday's class, we discussed a few sentences and we discussed the simple present. We stopped with that. And today, we will be continuing with the present continuous tense and the present perfect tense and the questions. The questions would start with WH words. For example, who? We'll be discussing these three aspects of active and passive voice. So I hope, I hope you're all with me. Let us start with the present continuous. Now, to begin with, you must understand a present continuous always has a helping verb followed by the present participle. As you see here, she is teaching a lesson. Now in this sentence, you have she as the subject verb or the head verb and it is followed by a helping verb which is is and then again the helping verb immediately takes the main verb that is the present participle which is teaching here. So, she is teaching a lesson. It is in the present continuous tense and she is the subject, teaching is the main verb, is is the helping verb and the lesson is the object. Why do we call this as an object? If you remember in yesterday's class, I told you a, quest, a word which answers the question what is said to be an object. Here, what is she teaching? Well, she's teaching a lesson. So the word a lesson is the object. Now, how is this sentence, which is in the present continuous form, changed in the passive? A lesson that is the object, becomes a subject, a lesson, then the helping verb comes down, is being taught by her. So a new word is coming in, that is being. And being is followed by the past participle. As we had discussed in yesterday's class, only the past participle is used in the passive voice. So the formula goes this way, object, followed by the helping verb, depending on the object, whether it is singular or plural. So it could be either is or have or are. It could be any one of these three, plus being, plus the past participle, plus by, plus subject. This exactly is the formula. So you see, a lesson, this is the object, is, object is singular, so I have used the helping verb is, it is a singular verb, plus, be plus start that is weekly past participle of teach and then by comes after that and finally the formula ends with the subject. So this exactly is the formula for present continuous. It's very important. Dear students, while discussing active and passive, you must keep one thing in mind and that is the formula or the formulas. Okay, so without these formulas, you cannot convert. Conversion doesn't become possible. It's simply not possible. So take a special note of the formula. You will have lots of books, grammar books, consult the grammar books. See how they have dealt with these sentences. There are many sentences. So this is how we convert a present continuous tense into passive. I hope you are with me so far. It's clear. Okay, now we come to the present perfect tense. You see, present perfect tense is a tense which is used to talk about something which has just been completed. It is actually not a present action. Action is over, but it has been just completed. So we call it as present perfect. Now look at this. I have completed my work. So remember, when you are writing a present perfect tense, you must always use have or has. If the subject is singular, then the helping verb is has, third person singular. He has completed the work. If it is a first person singular, then the helping verb have comes in. If it is the third person plural, then again the helping verb have, which is plural in form, comes in. So, I takes the helping verb have 
And that is why I have written it this way. I have completed my work. Now, by looking at this sentence, you must be able to say that it is in the present perfect tense because have plus V3. That exactly is the structure for present perfect. So, you see how I have converted. The object obviously becomes a subject in the passive. So, my work has been completed. Now, why did I use has here? Because work is in the third person singular form. This is a point to be noted. This is where many students make mistakes. So you must know whether the object is in the singular form or a plural form. If it is singular, the verb that follows will definitely be in singular. If it is plural, the verb has to be in plural. So I hope you are clear with that. My work has then been comes. My work has been completed. Completed is the past participle. So, you look at the formula now. This is the point. This is the formula of the present perfect and it's very important. Object plus have or has. Why do I use have or has? Because it depends on the object. If the number of object is singular, then obviously you have to use has. If it is plural, then you have to use have. So here, object plus have or has plus be plus v3. That exactly is the passive form of present perfect. That is the formula, so to say. So I hope you are clear with these two tenses. How do we convert present continuous into passive? The formula is given. And how do we convert a present perfect into passive? Again, the formula is given. Be thorough with these two formulas. Right. Now, there is another form of passive coming in. That is, how do we change sentences with which begin with the question word who? Who is a question word? It's a WH question. So, for example, you see, who teaches you English? This is in the present simple. But it starts with who? It does not start with the subject. It starts with the question word. Now, when you get sentences with question words, how do you change them? Look at this. A simple example. Who teaches you English? Who is the question word? Teaches is a verb. You is the indirect object. In, la in the last class, if you remember, we had discussed the indirect objects. So, who, him, her, them, us, you, all these are said to be the indirect objects. So here you have an indirect object, that is you. So how do you change this? By whom are you taught English? So who changes into by whom? This is the main change that you have to keep in mind. I repeat. Who changes into? By whom? Keep that in mind. So, who teaches you English is changed into by whom are you taught English? Taught is a past participle. Past participle will always remain the same. There is no change in that. The only change that you need to take in mind, the only change that you need to focus is this. By whom? I hope it's clear now. Now, again, the question word who can be used in the present continuous tense. If you look at this sentence, who is teaching you English? It is clear that the sentence is in the present continuous. I repeat, the sentence is in the present continuous because it starts with a helping verb followed by the present participle. So helping verb starting with the present participle definitely is in the present continuous. It is is. This is a part that you need to kind of focus. Is plus V4. So, how do you change this? Well, there are two ways of changing it, but you need not go into two ways. You just follow one. If you really want to know or if you're interested in knowing the other way, we shall discuss it in a later class. But right now, you see how I've changed it here. By whom are you being taught English? There should be a question mark here. By whom are you taught? Are you being taught English? Now look at the formula. By plus whom plus 
helping verb by whom are this R comes down here as the helping verb. Then the indirect object by whom are you being taught English? So you see, by whom are the helping verb? Are you indirect object comes down? Being taught, that is the past participle of teach, plus direct object, that is English. This exactly is the formula for changing a question word or for changing a sentence which starts with a question word in the present continuous form. So, active and passive is actually a vast chapter. There are lots of exercises to be done and lots of exceptions are there. So, uh, today I think this much is enough. Now, what you need to do at home is you need to take hold of your grammar book and go through these exercises. There are lots of exercises related to active and passive and they must have definitely given the sentences. Tenses are used. So find out how a present continuous uh, tense in the active voice is changed into passive form. Find out how a present perfect in the active voice is changed into passive voice. How is it done? What is the formula to be used? Find out those sentences and then from active to passive. You need to change those sentences from active to passive. Also look at this part. That is a sentence which starts with a question word. That is WH, WH word. See how they have changed and if you can get sentences, try to change them. Remember, the most important thing while discussing active and passive voice is that you need to be aware of the changes. How is the subject changed? How is the object changed? What is the helping verb that is used? Where do we use by? The formulas. Be thorough with the formulas and keep solving the sentences according to the kinds of tenses. You take every tense, present continuous, present perfect. And one more important point to be noted is that present perfect continuous. This present perfect continuous will have no passive voice. For example, I have been learning English for three years. I have been learning English for three years as present perfect continuous. And for that, we have no passive. Keep this in mind. And I hope you must have got a clear picture about this. If you really have any doubts, okay, when we meet in class, we can discuss those things. But for time being, keep in touch with these tenses. Keep practicing. And stay safe at home. Till we meet again, goodbye and take care. <laughs> no, no.